Praise God, glory to Dios. This is Evangelist Michael Fernandez. If you want to be a part of our ministry and the adventures, the things we're doing, great things for God to bring the good news. If you want to be part of this ministry, go to my website and hablalos in the name of Jesus Christ. Dios le bendiga. Praise God, hallelujah. This is Evangelist Michael Fernandez. I'm glad you're here with us today. We're going to be talking about forgiveness. Forgiving people who hurt you, even though you feel that they don't deserve to be forgiven because of the crime they commit against you or the sexual abuse they have committed towards you as a child or verbal abuse or they reject you because you're not the right color or because you don't have the education. What might be the problem that you're facing today? I recommend that you must forgive And in order to get out of that prison of captivity, of bitterness and hate and condemnation, because one, like myself, I understand I was abused as a child, as an individual. I hated that person. I mm. practically wanted to kill them. But God says, release them, forgive them. And says, I understand if you're going through some heartaches, there's hope in the grace and in the love of God. And today we have an awesome guest here, Ron Gar, and we're going to be talking about forgiveness. Praise God. God bless you, brother. Thank Glad you. Glad to have you, brother. Thank you. I appreciate you inviting me here all the time. Yeah, and you're right. You know, forgiveness, there's so many opportunities in today's society and our relationships. Two, uh, we talk about we don't have to forgive. We get to forgive. Right. But just uh, a basic understanding of forgiveness, I go to Webster to see what Webster says forgiveness is because we... You know, we've got all, all these ideas about what we think forgiveness is and what it looks like, and it's really an awesome topic. But basically, forgiveness in Webster, uh, Webster breaks it down for giveness. And Amen. for, according to Webster, is to be in favor of something. Uh -huh. And Webster defines give as the free transfer of something, uh -huh. to transfer freely. And ness is a state of being, a state of existence. And so you put it all together and you get, you are living in the state of being in favor of transferring something freely. And in the kingdom of God, the thing that we're transferring freely is a pardon. Amen. And so basically because of what Jesus has done, we live in that place where we are transferring a pardon to one another all day long. Praise the Lord. I love what you said about the commandment. There's more than 10 commandments. Did you know that, saints? There's many, many more. Yes. <laughs> But Jesus talks about the fact, and Paul wrote it, we must forgive. It's in Colossians. Colossians 3.13, and he says, make allowance for each other's faults. I have mine, you have yours. He says, make allowance for those faults and forgive anyone who offends you. He doesn't say forgiveness is selective. He says, you're forgiving anyone who offends you. Remember, the Lord forgave you, so you must Amen. forgive others. <laughs> no missing, no missing words there. Amen. Amen. I remember uh, vividly when I was a child, uh, when I first got saved, at the age of 13, and and my father was a very, uh, not sexually abused, and he wasn't the one, but he did a lot of verbal abuse. Mm -hmm. And I was outside, and I was cleaning the yard, and, and my daddy was so hateful, cursing, because he believed in Satan. And I said, look, Jesus, he's so hateful, and you tell me to forgive him? And did you know Jesus spoke to me in an audible voice? He said, son, I forgave you. I thought Jesus was going to say, poor little boy, poor baby, you know, and feel sorry for me. No. Mm -hmm. Jesus made it very clear. I forgave you. Shouldn't you not forgive him? Hallelujah. And put it very clear and heard it from God himself. As a child, I've seen, even though people abuse you or hurt you, mm -hmm. and they might be worthy of punishment or being rebuked, But God makes you wants our responsibility as sons and daughters of God Amen. to operate it through the grace and the love yes. that he gives us to forgive that individual. You know, I understand that our own love, we cannot forgive. Correct. But with the love of God and with God's strength, we can forgive them because we won't. Our flesh won't let us. You admitted you didn't want you, to. Not even want to. I, oh no, I would rather him have be, you know, punished. You know, I but, know. But that's how our natural part of us. But when we operate through the Spirit, Amen. The Spirit of God, 
would not fulfill the lust of the flesh. And the lust of the flesh is all evil work to go in, going against mm -hmm. God, bitterness, hate, being vindictive. But the love of God is love, joy, peace, long suffering, temperance. Amen. Long suffering. You know, I love what you said. You know about your dad. Uh, you know, the world is under under the law still because they've rejected Christ. Right. Therefore, if you're not under grace, you're under the law. Mm. And so they deal with wounding and they deal with being hurt by one another in that place of their own ability to forgive. And you're right. It was Christ inside you that forgave your God, that forgave your father. Right. You know, the Bible says the love of God has been shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Spirit. So when Michael says that it's the love of God that he used to forgive his father, rather than the love of Michael, which is finite, the love of God has no bounds. Right. And so that's why it was so effective, because the love of God, which has been shed abroad in our hearts, uh, this is the way we forgive one another. You know, the Bible says that uh, God is so ready to forgive, and we need to be imitators of God. Amen. If God is so ready to forgive, then we need to be ready to forgive. Amen. But the Bible says the reason that he is ready to forgive is because of his unfailing love. Amen. And once again, if we're imitators of God, then it's the unfailing of love of God that's in us that always offers forgiveness to those that are wounding us and constantly butting heads with us. Amen. I met this young man that he mm -hmm. goes to my Bible study. Uh, he's a seven-day Adventist. I was witnessing. He says, I can't come back to the Lord. He backslided. And, and I says, why? Because I want to kill my wife and the man he's been having a sexual affair for two years. Who is that man? My brother-in-law. I said, mm -hmm. that was hit too close to home. Yeah. And I says, brother, let me tell you, you need to just come back to Jesus because you need the Savior because you can't forgive that man. But Jesus in you can forgive him. So ask Jesus to come in and ask Jesus with his love to forgive the one who did that. That's the only way because you can't do it. Within your own strength, you can't. No, and true. he did, and he came back, Amen. and Amen. he released the murder and hate. Now, in the minds of the world, I will kick that man's behind. <laughs> I will. This is the natural That's carnal part. minded. That, that's carnal minded. John Austin used to say, meatheads. <laughs> carnal mind heads, meat heads. <laughs> so yeah, I suggest we need to be, let the love of God, the mm -hmm. shed abroad in our hearts, to forgive those who hurt you. And if you out there listening, if you've been wounded, mm -hmm. and, 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 and your sister or brother or your babysitter or someone who did something devilish to you, you can't forgive them within your own strength. Like Brother John, Ron Gar said, it's the love of God that is shed in your heart. You need a Savior. Hallelujah. And He's going to help you forgive that person who hurts you because you can't do it. That's why we need a Savior. Amen. There, there's some misconceptions about forgiveness also. I've he I hear this many times. You know, we deal with marriage relationships all the time. And we run into people that say, well, I, I just can't forgive this person for what they've done. And you're right. We agree. No, you can't. Okay, but you're supposed to be dead. It's the life of Christ that's supposed to be working inside you. But there's this false humanistic New Age type of teaching that has uh, infiltrated our church where we think that we have to, that we have to forgive ourselves. Right, it's dependent and, on your strength and your power. Yeah, and that's not Bible. No, we, we don't we forgive depend, ourselves. We, Look at it this way. If we could forgive ourselves then Jesus wasn't needed. Amen. Amen. But we know that's not true. We need you Jesus. Know, because even the Jews knew it when they had the high priest once a year. Uh, he went in and talked to God and uh, made an atonement for their sins and they were forgiven. So throughout the history of the Bible, we see that forgiveness always involves God. It always involves, uh, it always involves Jesus because the high priest represented Jesus. And in the New Testament, we see the Holy Spirit in here. And every time forgiveness, and that's why I don't like that idea that, well, I need to forgive myself, you know, uh, because number one, you can't. And number two, the idea behind forgiveness is that it preaches the gospel. Right. In the process of forgiveness, we see God, we see the Holy Spirit, and we see Jesus. Amen. Every single time we go through that, Amen. forgiveness is just the way that the gospel is presented in a working fashion. By that I mean, you know, uh, just God, he saw, we sinned, we offended God, we sinned against God. And so God went ahead and he provided the Lamb, Jesus, and he offered that to us. Amen. We receive what Jesus did. We Amen. receive that forgiveness. We repent. 
and our relationship with God is restored. Amen. But when you, the world wants to remove Jesus from that. Amen. Because Amen. true Bible forgiveness always takes, always has Jesus in it. But look at this. We receive, Michael sins. And so Michael uh, offends me. And I say, okay, Brother Michael, uh, I forgive you. Now, according to the Bible nowadays, that's, uh, I've forgotten about the sin. And I don't remember the wrongs done to it. It's total forgiveness. And so what happens now is he sinned not against Ron, but he sinned against God. Remember David right. with Bathsheba? Yeah. He sinned against God. Remember, um, um, there was another example. Uh, oh, um, uh, where he talked about the Bible says that he said, the prodigal son, he came, he sinned against God. He recognized that he sinned against God. All sin is sinned against God. Right. And so it's awesome because now we're going to see the Holy Spirit in the process of forgiveness. God sends the Holy Spirit to the world to reprove the world, to rebuke the world right, right. of sin. Amen. Amen. And so there we, we have the process of the Holy Spirit saying to the world, this is sin against God. And what he does is the Bible says that um, godly sorrow worketh repentance. You can't have godly sorrow without the work of the Holy Spirit working in you. Amen. He brings that godly sorrow to us. And the Bible says the goodness of God leads us to repentance. Amen. What is the goodness of God? Amen. The goodness of God is Jesus. Amen. And so we see that the Holy Spirit convicts us of the sin. We see where Jesus has made allowances for that sin. And we see the whole process. God had man sin against him. He forgave him. Man receives the forgiveness. Our relationship is restored. That's the gospel. And Amen. we see it every time. Michael sins against me. I forgive Michael. He receives that forgiveness. Our relationship is restored. We don't ever want to try to leave Jesus out of the process of forgiveness. It's so powerful. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. God says to forgive those even if they don't deserve it. What about when they do hurt you, brother? Mm. Should we put ourselves in that same position for them to continue doing the things they did to us? You know, people say that all the time, especially in the marriage where the wife says, well, my husband keeps treating me and abusing me and I shouldn't have to be a doormat. And why not? You know, mm. was Jesus the doormat? Right. You know, uh, the idea being I'm dead and the idea is I don't have to forgive you. I get to forgive you. Right. Because I'm painting the picture of Christ in the gospel for you. Right. It doesn't really matter how much you sin. Uh, when, it's in, when it's against me personally, I take that as an opportunity to show the love of God. The Bible says the love does not uh, insist on being right. Amen. And at the end of the day, God is all about relationships. He's right. not concerned you're right or she's right. He's concerned about the relationship. I want the relationship restored. Right. Now, in the in the uh, for example, if if someone hurts you mm. physically, uh, abuse you, shot mm -hmm. you, mm -hmm. cut you up, then <laughs> it's an extreme. That's putting us uh, to the that, test. That, that, that is one time you would have to draw the line. Yet you could forgive them and love them from a distance and be, separate yourself from that individual so it would not occur again because of, there are a lot of women who are, and men too, not just women, yeah. that are abused mm -hmm. physically. Mm -hmm. and, and even as if you were a child, I would not put you right back around that person who did the sexual abuse again. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, you're supposed to forgive them, but no, don't put yourself back in that predicament for it to reoccur. That's only common sense. You know, uh, that we do believe in forgive, release them, and bless them. If someone shot your son, you know you're going to have to forgive them and release them, but he's going to be in prison and you'll love him from a distance. You know what I mean? Hey, we, yeah, we, we forgiveness to, is not only just. just for you, it's for me too. Yeah. For you know, and the Bible, God is perfect picture. When you talk about the young man um, uh, heard about forgiving in, in the way Jesus did, you know, uh, Jesus had already forgiven the one that hurt that young man. Amen. He's already forgiven that sin. And so it's just a matter of us catching up to where Jesus is. And no, we're not there yet. We still have these earth suits and they hinder us and they get wounded and they have their emotions sometimes that are out of control. And it's easy to bruise one another. You know, right. someone made an example once that we're all like teacups or coffee cups. Right. And we're all full with who we are. We are full with the essence of who we are. And we go through life and we go through life bumping up to one another. Right. And whatever is in your coffee cup is going to spill out onto the other person. Right. And uh, some of us, you know, you're on the the road and somebody caught, 
cut you off and uh, you know, what's in your coffee cup is about to come out. You've just been hit. You're going to spill something. I love being bumped because ideally the love of God is full up in me and that's what's going to come out and I'm going to pour the love of God out on you. We're Amen. not all perfect yet. I'm not saying I am. We have a ways to go. But there's nothing wrong with separating yourself. When we do marriage counseling all the time, there is so, we never, ever, 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 ever counsel divorce. That's not the will of God. It's against the will of God. Uh, the only people that get divorced are people who have hard hearts. And the Bible says that we keep our forgiveness on the table by having tender hearts. That's over. Let me read yeah, that. Read that That's over in Ephesians 4.32. And it says, Instead, brothers, be kind one to another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another just as God through Christ has forgiven you. So in the scripture we see it's revealed that the reason God was able to forgive us was because he had a tender heart. So that's the vehicle that we're going to be able to forgive one another on, and that's with a tender heart. The key is if I don't receive your wounds as offenses, I can keep my heart tender. We're supposed to be walking in the spirit, not in the flesh. The Bible says the wicked one touches him not. My spirit is saved. My spirit is perfect. The spirits of just men made perfect. You cannot wound me in my spirit. Yes, you can hurt me in my flesh, you can hurt me emotionally, but at the end of the day, I have the choice of whether I'm going to receive that or not. Mm -hmm. And I choose not to receive those offenses. That doesn't make me any better than anybody else. It just guarantees my walk in the Spirit. And at some point, I will have the opportunity to go ahead, because, to, to go ahead and preach the gospel through that love, through that um, lack of receiving the offense, because it's the Holy Spirit now who is convincing and rebuking you of the sin that you've done. It's not me. It's him. He's working in you. But if I'm sitting there defending myself, if I'm sitting there striking back, the Holy Spirit can't work. Because truly, man can only hear one voice at one time. You're either going to hear me correcting you and yelling at you and condemning you, perhaps, or you're going to hear the Holy Spirit gently reproving you and rebuking you, allowing repentance to be shed, repentance to come to you, and seeing the work of God, giving you godly sorrow, whereby you're going to be able to come into that right relationship that's desired from this uh, situation. Can you read that scripture you read earlier, Colossians 3:13? Surely, about uh, you must forgive? Yes. <laughs> Wonderful, I love it. Make allowances for each other's faults. Make allowances, I love that. I know. Knowing that we're human and we would make mistakes, your brother might make a mistake, but if they do, mm -hmm. we need to be the bigger person and there allowing God's love and forgiveness there for the individual who does the mistake, commits the sin or the error they should and have done. And he doesn't say you're not going to have any faults. Right. He said right there, it's a given. Make allowances for each other's fault. You're each other. I'm each other. We are going to have faults. Right. And that's why we shouldn't put our eyes on man. Amen. Don't put your eyes on me because I'll let you down in a second. But put your eyes on the Jesus I serve. Amen. And forgive anyone who offends you. Right. You can go through life, and I know there are people that get offended. You may offend me. You may not even know that you've offended me. Right. Some people don't really. Yeah, I, I know, know, because, you know, fault finders, fault finders, they're good at finding fault because they're looking to find fault. And if you're looking to find fault, you will find fault because the world's not perfect. <laughs> and especially in other people. So we get offended all the time without the other people even know. There was a situation once where, oh, my mother-in-law, my mother-in-law, she went and she won some money at a gambling casino maybe 15 years ago. And my wife was talking to her on the phone and I made the comment, hey, money bags, you're doing good. That offended her. I didn't even know it, but it offended her. And I go, wow, Diane says, my wife, she told me, you know, that offended mom. I go, you're kidding. She goes, I know, I don't understand it, but for some reason it offended your, my mother. So I didn't think too much about it, but that night the Holy Spirit woke me up. And I wrote her just a nice little letter saying, Mom, I'm real sorry that I offended you. Uh, did I do anything wrong? I didn't think so. Uh, did she do anything wrong? Not really, but she got offended by it. And the Bible says I'm to make allowances for her. So I made allowance. I took the low end. I didn't receive a possible offense. She was sitting there hurt and wounded by something I said, so I did what I could to fix it because at the end of the day, God is all about relationships. Would I rather have been right or would I rather have been reconciled? Amen. I chose to be reconciled in my relationship with her. I got that from my good friend Carrie Hall. He talks about that all the time. Do you want to be right or do you want to be reconciled? In the kingdom of God, we want to be reconciled. Amen. That is awesome. Amen. Praise the Lord. And then making allowances, that's the most important thing. And what else does the scripture says? Forgive 
anyone who, we, who offends you. And then here's the key. I love it. It's, it's a verbal encouragement or even a reprimand from Paul as he's writing, remember. You know, what are you thinking about during the daytime? You know, in a month or so, we're going to talk about the mind of Christ and how we should be thinking. Paul says right here, I want you to remember the fact that the Lord forgave you. Amen. When you're making allowances for somebody, I want you to remember you've been forgiven. Amen. And because you've been forgiven, can't you freely give that? Freely we've been given, freely give to others. I didn't do anything to get forgiven, but the Lord did that. How? He made allowances for me. Wow. Why? Because of his unfailing love. Amen. So with all that put together, he offers me forgiveness all the time. And he says, when you're in a similar situation, remember that the Lord forgave you. And then he says, because of all this, you must forgive others. It's a powerful witness. Amen. When we first meet God, did you know this? You know, let's say you're, say you're not saved, you don't know who God is, and you come to a Bible study, and all of a sudden the gospel is preached, and you go, wow, I want that. You don't have a relationship with God at that point, but you're about to. But do you know the very first, you know, God wears many hats. You know, he's God Almighty, he's God the Creator, he's God the Son, he's God the Spirit. Do you know what hat on he has on, what hat he's wearing the very first time you meet God? He's got the hat of forgiveness. He's got God the Forgiver hat on. Because you can't go anywhere further, deeper in your relationship with God until you receive that forgiveness that he's got there. Amen. Because it's receiving that forgiveness that takes down the middle wall of partition that brings you into that relationship with God. Amen. So the Amen. very first time we meet him, he's forgiving us. What does that say about our relationships? Amen. And the Bible said, God so loved the world. He, he forgave the world of their sins. Even before, Amen. while they were yet living in sin, mm. he forgave them and delivered them made it a provision for them to come into the family. We Isn't tend to forget that the world's a mess right now, big trouble, and we get so distracted. And yet you're right, God so loved, not just me, he loved the world. And I was thinking about this today. You know, we, we see God and we find God in worship. You know, the Bible says that God seeks those that will worship him, those that will worship him in spirit and in truth. In doing that, he finds us. He hunts us down. Fabulous. And we also find God or we seek him or we meet him in praise. The Bible says he inhabits the praises of his people. We also find him or we see him in prayer. The Bible says, uh, if my people who are called by my name would humble themselves and pray and seek my face. Those are three ways that we know that we're supposed to see God, find God, know God. And we think that God is trying to keep us out of heaven. No, 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 no. God is trying to get us into heaven. And I love this because in addition to finding God in worship, in addition to finding God in praise, in addition to finding God in prayer, we get to find him in forgiveness. Amen. Because it's him, because he offers that forgiveness to us. He's in the midst of it. We see God, God gets offended. We see the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit convicts us of sin, causes godly sorrow to come, bringing repentance. And we see Jesus, the goodness of God, being offered up for those sins. We see God in the every aspect of life. Amen. And it's because he wants to be found. Amen. And what is the lady who washed Jesus' feet. Mm. Oh, good stuff. And what did the scripture says, when you have so many uh, sins, so much to be forgiven, you're more grateful. Exactly. You're talking about the reward. You know there's a reward? Something happens to you when you forgive people? And you're right. There was, uh, actually the Bible, said, there's two examples. The lady who has um, washed his feet. And there was another example Jesus used about one guy, a king, forgave this guy of a, uh, debt. a $10 debt. And then another guy, the king, forgave him of a $10 million debt. And Jesus asked the question, says, which one of you do you think, which one, who do you think will be, uh, who will love him more? And he says, the one that was greatly, greatly forgiven. And it's the same way with the lady, with Mary, I think was washing Jesus' feet. Yes. She yeah. has been greatly forgiven. And the reward for greatly forgiven is this. I tell you, Luke 7, 47, I tell you, her sins, and they are many, have been forgiven, so she has shown me much love. But a person who is forgiven little shows only a little love. So the more you can forgive somebody, your reward is they will love you more and more and more. Uh -huh. And that's what forgiveness is. It's the opportunity for you to show the love of God. Amen. I want to show you how much God loves you. I will forgive anything that you need, anything, Praise anytime, anywhere. 
Amen. Well, praise God, brother. I'm glad you came and discussed this. And it's a great and, topic. Uh, um, and I'm looking forward to have you back again. And next time you'll be coming, you'll be talking about the, the mind, mind of, of Christ. Christ. Are we Lord. out of time already? Yeah, we're about Hallelujah. to. Hallelujah. Well, we go fast. Well, praise I, the Lord. I love it. And if you're listening right now, if you need prayer, call in for prayer. And, mm -hmm. and let's just right now say, if you have not accepted Jesus, say, Jesus, come in my heart and be the Lord of my life. I believe that you're the Son of God, that God has raised you from the dead. And I confess Jesus is the Lord and my Savior. Right now, Father, touch the hearts of those who have been hurt physically, spiritually, emotionally, or verbal abuse. God, let them know that you love them and that you'll see them through this. Father, just bless them and give them strength to go through the trials and tribulations, Father, Amen. in Jesus' name. Amen. And if you're sick, right now lay hands on your body and receive the healing that Jesus already provided at the cross in Jesus' name. I believe that God is just touching your heart. Please write me and let me know. And if you want to get a hold of Brother Ron Geyer, please call us and we'll refer you to him. And God bless you, brother. Looking forward to have you in Jesus' name to tune in. Thank you, brother. Thank I you. I enjoyed evangelist. you being here. Amen. Thank God you. bless you, brother. Praise God. Glory a Dios. This is Evangelist Michael Fernandez. If you want to be a part of our ministry in the adventures, the things we're doing, great things for God to bring the good news. If you want to be part of this ministry, go to my website and talk to us in the name of Jesus. Dios le bendiga.